Aloha, my name is uh, Timothy Nibakoya, and I'm a Comanche and Chickasaw from Apache, Oklahoma. And uh, my wife also, uh, which is a part of this, is uh, Alicia Nibakoya, which um, she's the one who uh, really organized the uh, event tonight. And uh, anyway, it's uh, to coincide with the uh, Greater Tulsa Indian Arts Festival, which is uh, going on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And anyway, she was the one who uh, went ahead and um, uh, put this all together. And uh, also we have a uh, flute, uh, a uh, art exhibit tonight. And also we have um, a live paint going on uh, with a gentleman by the name of, uh, he's a Cherokee artist, uh, Ryan Lee Smith. And also tonight we have uh, Cecil Gray and the Blues Band. Uh, no, actually, uh, you know, I've never got to meet uh, Stevie Salas, but I believe he should be here probably within the hour. And um, anyway, I think that he will uh, probably uh, be able to give you a pretty good interview. Tell me, what can the viewers expect? You know, it's really a movie about the development and history of North America and how all the flavors of different repressed people, including Native Americans, created everything that we know, but through history, things were separated and left out. And what we did is we used music as our sort of, like, thing to guide you in, but really, what if you watch what happens with the, how we influenced music history, it's also how the flavor of our country was uh, developed. and. Uh, in a nutshell, that's what the film's about. It's really a history film where we use music history, which is very important, to show that we were left out of the story, but there's reasons why, and and uh, we have a significant role in, in, in everything that you listen to today on the radio. Are people going to be amazed to know how big of an influence natives played? Everyone's shocked. Everywhere I go in the world, from Australia to Cannes to Budapest to everywhere in America to Canada, people, you know, it's been winning awards. We started off winning at Sundance, and. And it's, it, I didn't want to make a film that was like a, a, one of those films that made everyone feel guilty and bad. I wanted to show a film about these heroes because uh, on, on the surface, you know, I knew that there's not a lot of role models in uh, Indian country. And here I found all these ones that no one knew about. And they, they were heroes to the biggest, most famous rock stars in the world. So in my film we have, you know, Martin Scorsese and the Ramones and Steven Tyler and I mean, the biggest musicians and people in the world are in this film talking about these Native Americans who are heroes to them. And that was really important. I wanted people to understand that how important they, they were. I didn't want it to be like me saying, this guy was better than that guy. I wanted to let Steven Tyler say, all I listened to was this guy. And that's why I, I sound like this. And you could just, then you go, hmm, that's pretty crazy. I was, well, I'll, I'll just tell you real quick if you want me to mention Randy Castillo and Jesse, because Jesse in Oklahoma is a big deal, you know what I mean? But, so, for me, you know, Randy Castillo, there when, when I was playing with Rod Stewart, I got out of high school and I got this giant band, again, this huge band with Rod Stewart all of a sudden and didn't know what I was doing and I, I was partying and going crazy. And Randy Castillo sort of found me knowing that I was an American Indian and he was a Native, he was a Native American, we were both Native Americans. We found each other and we hung out with a lot of the same groups of rock stars and we went to the same clubs and parties. And I was getting to the point where I was just, Whoa! you know, I'm making all kind of money now. I'm like girls and partying. And Randy was a, as hardcore as they get, but Randy had a balance. And Randy said to me one day, he goes, he goes, you really messed up. He goes, I'm taking you to Indian country. And it was the first time anyone ever took me to Indian country. And he took me to New Mexico with him. And I started to go and it became something that I, that, that I, that I went back to constantly to find balance. I'd go back to the resident house just because that's where we were all hanging out making music. And we would just work on our own personal, you know, rootsies type of music with all the guys around in Pueblo. And then we'd go back, you know, he'd go back with Ozzy and I'd go back with, you know, Mick Jagger or whoever and, and we'd play these massive things. But I'd go back with a sense of balance and a sense of, of uh, I knew how far I could push my envelope. And Randy was a savior for me because I was really off the deep end. And it's, it's in the movie too, because Trudell, John Trudell and I talk a lot about that with Randy. And it's, when I was with Rod Stewart, again, I was thinking to myself, for the first time it hit me that I wasn't the stereotypical looking rock and roll guitar player. I, 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 I thought I was, because I, I, I grew up just thinking I was like everybody else. But I was different, you know, I, wasn't, I wasn't white, I wasn't black. 
I, di I didn't fit in with these guys. I didn't fit in, but I somehow had to find this place. So I started to think to myself, I can't be the only guy like this. So I started to, to search. And, and I would see this name Jesse at Davis all the time. So it turns out, I didn't even know it, that Jesse was a Kiowa. I didn't know, any, I just would see his name all the time, okay? So then it turns out, I was playing some of his guitar parts with Rod Stewart, and I didn't even know it. So there was, here I was thinking there was no Native American musicians, and here I was actually playing one guy's parts and didn't know it, when you'd play Jackson, you know, if you sat and played a John Lennon song or something. And so then, later on in, in life, I started to realize that Jesse Ed Davis has this incredible impact on the most famous musicians in the world. I was in uh, the studio with the Rolling Stones in uh, 1994, I think, 95, and uh, Ronnie Wood would tell me stories about this great guitar he had that Jesse Ed Davis gave him, and he would talk about Jesse Ed Davis like he, he was talking about his superhero. And I'd be like, wow, this Jesse Ed Davis was so important to so many people. So when I went to make the film and do the exhibit, Jackson Brown and I mean, everybody wanted to talk about Jesse Ed Davis. And, you know, and then Wes Studi would tell me about, well, we'd go and see Jesse play, and he was like, to, to Wes Studi, was like a superhero. Like, Jesse was like this, one of these guys that nobody knows except for the most famous artists in the world all worship him. And that's the way it is for a lot of the people in the film.